Okay, so welcome. My name is Tiva Ankela, and I will give this introductory talk today. First, some minutes, an introduction to artificial intelligence. And one can ask, while we are here in the context, much in the context of humanities, so why would artificial intelligence be interesting from the point of view of? humanities and social sciences. First of all, some questions within artificial intelligence are more or less directly related to humanities, like linguistics. So natural language processing and linguistics are directly connected. And many questions within AI, like knowledge representation, which is the topic today, are also closely related to philosophical questions which have been there for hundreds or even thousands of years. Moreover, artificial intelligence methods uh, presumably belong to the area of computer science methodologies that can be useful within digital humanities. So it's not only the kind of some statistical methods that are being used to analyze uh, humanities data, but all kinds of methods that are used to analyze images and many other kinds of data that are available within humanities nowadays. Alan Turing is very often mentioned as one of the very first forefathers and uh, the Turing test, maybe the idea of testing whether a machine is intelligent is interesting from the point of view of creating a system that would be able to have a conversation uh, with the human being so that the human being who is being tested doesn't know whether the other one is a machine or is a human being. Of course that requires that it needs to be happening through some interface that doesn't reveal it immediately. Marvin Minsky is another uh, prominent figure who has kind of gone uh, through very many areas of artificial intelligence and so, for example, among the early ones, how emotional processes are also important when artificial intelligence is considered. Uh, one remark that I, uh, when I pre when prepared these slides, slides, I didn't actually know that he had just passed away, so he passed away a week ago, so he's, he has been around until these days. But in general, so in artificial intelligence is actually related to human beings in that sense that the basic idea is to develop various kinds of methods and tools that would be there to model of what human beings are doing, whether it's related to language, able to speak, able to read, able to write, able to uh, do various things, able to translate, able to see things, able to produce things able to understand what is the world around us, what is the knowledge about it, ability to reason about things, to plan, to kind of consider future events, and to be able to deal with other people or other agents, and to model emotions, to play games, to be able to model or simulate life-like phenomena. There have been all kinds of trends within AI and one way nowadays popular within, for example, digital humanities is to use Google Books and to see how various terms are, have been used. And uh, here we see that neural networks and artificial intelligence have been very popular, but, for example, the artificial intelligence as a term used to be uh, more popular uh, in late 1980s, where the peak was there. And then, uh, then there are other uh, things which are then have been rising, great kind of gaining popularity, like semantic web is one of those which is then has been kind of gaining popularity uh, during the past ten years or so, which is in, in a prominent position nowadays. And uh, other areas like knowledge representation, it was one another term which was very popular in the 1980s and which is kind of, of less, popular, less popularity nowadays. There, uh, the 2007, I think, is the last year which is available here and things that have happened since then are not available there. 
many of those distributions were quite smooth in the sense that there were no, not many peaks, only maybe one peak of popularity. But I think machine translation is quite interesting because there have been various booms and it has been very clear that the funding and the project related to uh, machine translations have been very popular and then there have been some reports or so which have then put the research down, the funders have thought that okay, this is not worthwhile to try to create machine translation systems and then it has been also uh, losing popularity. And I would claim that since what is now here, machine translation has a new boom again, uh, thanks to the uh, machine learning based methods that are used. But this is a topic in a later session. But in general, in AI, for example, this uh, Theravinograph's SHRDLU system that was created at MIT already a long time ago gave some kind of uh, popularity on the idea that natural language processing could be, could be used but then it appeared that it only works in a small scale so that the kind of domains of conversing with uh, computers would be very narrow and limited and only recent years the kind of the scope of semantic scope let's say has grown, and I think this is one of the topics today, too. So there are large semantic uh, web systems and there are applications of machine learning which have both kind of helped in gaining uh, coverage in these kind of semantic systems. And as a last remark on artificial intelligence, for example, machine learning as a topic has been there for 50 years as well, like many of the areas of uh, artificial intelligence and there are uh, theoretically uh, founded uh, approaches which can be theory driven and logic based, they can be data driven based on for example probability theory or, or information theory. There are biologically inspired methods and the machine learning is often seen either as a means to achieve some uh, practical results as a kind of engineering approach but it can be also a model of cognitive processes and such as a kind of related to this biological cognitive and social processes. So uh, thank you very much. This was a kind of brief introduction to the area of artificial intelligence.